Science A, Unit 7, Array List. This is the in-class review. First off, Array List. An Array List is an object that can be used to store multiple objects. You must type the following statement at the top of your file in order to use Array List. That is, import java.util.arraylist. The following statement only declares an array list so that it can store student objects. The statement does not instantiate an array list. So if I do array list, type student computer science, I've declared it saying I'm going to have this, but I haven't actually created it. The following statement, the third statement, declares and instantiates or creates the array list so that it can store student objects. Notice, the array list, student, computer science all go together. To instantiate it, you use the assignment operator, the reserved word new. You tell it that it's an array list of students. And here, the open, close, you're going to use the default constructor. Like an array, the first element of an array list has index subscript of zero. Square brackets cannot be used with array lists as they are not arrays. Instead, you're going to use important methods. Okay, remember an array list contains objects. It's not an array, so you don't use those brackets. You're going to use specific methods. The methods that you should be able to use are add, which adds a new element to the end of an array list, or it inserts a new element into the middle of an array list if you tell it someplace, if you tell it where to go. Get accesses one element in the array list. Set overrides an element. So instead of just inserting it, it's going to override it with a new value and returns the old value. Just in case you want to do something with that old value. Remove removes an element out of an array list and returns the value that was removed. Size returns the number of elements in an array list. Now, usually an array list are used to store objects like strings or students rather than primitive data types like int or double. If you're just storing primitive data types, oftentimes just use an array. But the current version of Java will allow you to store int and double in an array list since Java will auto box the numbers as integer or double objects as it transfers them in and out of an array list. Behind the scenes, an array list is really a standard array. That is, it's an array. That is, an array is a property of the array list class. And when an array list is instantiated via constructor, it's really just creating a standard array. When its default constructor is used, an array list has an initial capacity and size of zero. What happens is behind the scenes, as a level of abstraction, array lists take care of all that getting rid of and redoing and moving stuff up and down inside of an array. Now, the methods that you'll be using. The get method, it's used to access the element stored at a given position. For example, computer science.get3 would return the student stored in index position three of computer science. System.out.println computer science.get3. Boom, you're gonna print that third the per, the student stored in location three, which would really be the fourth student. Student Fred is set to computer science.get3. I can take whatever the student is that's in location three and assign it the variable Fred. Another method would be the add method. One version, now remember this is an overloaded method. One version of add takes one parameter and simply adds it to the end. It increases the length of the array. So scores.add88 just adds 88 here to the end and increases the length of the array to six, indices zero through five. The other overloaded version can be used to add something at a specific index of the array list. A Boolean true value is returned if it successfully added it. So here, if I do scores.add one comma 88, says that in location one, I want you to put 88. So here's the original one, five items long. 33 is going to get moved down, 33, 44, 55, 66, all get moved down one index, and 88 gets inserted. 
After any given call to the add method, the size of the array list automatically increases by one, regardless of whether you add it in the middle or at the end. The size method returns the number of values that are currently stored in the array list. Okay, so this is not a size and number of bits or bytes, it's the number of elements. So the default constructor of array list sets the size of array list to zero. You can access the very last index of the array list using the size method. Whatever it is, dot size minus one. Remember that the size, if I've got 10 items, the last index is one less than that because we start indexing at zero. You can also have access to the very last element in the array list by using the get method. And again, same thing, get computer size dot, si dot size minus one. It's important to use the size method correctly and to subtract one when appropriate to avoid having a bounds error where you attempt to access an invalid position of an array list. The, J the Java Virtual Machine will throw a runtime index out of bounds exception in such cases and terminate the program. It'll crash. The following statement would cause an error. Computer science dot get computer science dot size and not because there's a missing uh, parenthesis, but because you're trying to index out of bounds. Array list methods. Okay, array list methods. The remove method. This simply takes a value out. You can don't have to remove something from the end. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to click that. You can remove it from anywhere. So here I've got items in in location zero through four. I want to remove the item that's in location one. That would take this, pull it out, and these guys would all the items in end indices two, three, and four would all shift to the left one. If the array list holds 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, and we want to output it, we wrote system.out.printlinescores.remove1, which would cause the value 33 to be displayed. Even though 33 is now permanently removed from the array list, we would at least print what we removed. Okay, so this is handy, and you could use this if you were debugging some code, you could put this in, and then when you had your code running correctly, you could put double slash lines in front of it to comment it out. So in case you made some other adjustments and wanted to see how the list was growing and shrinking again, you could uncomment it. The uh, set method. Okay, this is used to assign the value of an element at a given subscript position and thus overwrite an existing element. So if I have an array list of scores, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, and I say scores.set1, 88, this is different from add. Remember, add would have shoved 88 in between 22 and 33. Set says I'm going to toss 33 and put 88 here. Or it could be used in this way, in which case the old value, 33, would be printed out, again, saying this is what got tossed. Okay. Now, array list in classes and methods. In a regular client program, you might use an array list to store a list of your friends' names, as in the following example. Okay, so here you've got your main method, you declare your array list, and it's of friends, and then you're going to add Carrie Underwood, Taylor Swift, Dave Matthews. Then you're going to set Billy Joel in location one, you're going to add in location two, Phil Collins, and you're going to remove the item in location zero. Then you're going to output all of your friends, then display initials of friends, and you're going to do the output. Now, oops, here we have public static void initial, display initials, get the temp, and there's how we're going to display it. Okay. Now here, you got to remember that system that out to print line friends. Okay, you had Carrie Underwood, Taylor Swift, Dave Matthews. So you had Carrie Swift, Taylor, or sorry, Carrie Swift, Carrie Underwood, Taylor Swift, Dave Matthews. 
Then, and if we come along, let me do this. So we had location 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Then we set Billy Joel to location 1. So then you had, let's see here, we're going to do, we had Carrie Underwood, then we had Taylor Swift, and then we had Dave Matthews. Then we set location one to Billy Joel. Okay. And then we added at location two, so zero, one, two. So in here, we added Phil oops, Collins, and then we removed Carrie Underwood. So now we've got Billy Joel, Phil Collins, and Dave Matthews. Bing! System display initials, BJ, PC, DM. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, remember that this, um, remember that this occurs for mutable references, array lists, arrays, and objects. Does not occur for primitives or strings since they don't point in memory. Okay? So remember that this got changed. When we did display initials friends, boom, it changed it. Now, what happens here? Here, I just have the run through if we trace through the code segment. So here's our void main. This is what we did before. Carrie Underwood, Taylor Swift, Dave Matthews. Then we made it Billy Joel. Phil Collins, Dave Matthews, got rid of the front. Then when we did this guy here and we passed in friends, okay, it literally changed friends, okay? And boom, passed everything out, okay? So Array is pointing to friends. So whatever we do to array happens to happens to friends. Okay? Again, if you need to, you can pause it and look at it again. I sort of walked through it on the first part. And by the way, this is just taking it, getting the initials, and then putting the initials back in the location. Now you could use an array list as an instance variable with a class as in the following example. Public class friends, array list string of friends, and then public friends. Here's your, your default constructor. Here's where you're going to add friends, and here's where you're going to display them. Your client program, friend test. Friends, homies is set to new friends. You add Jill, Mary, and then you display, and it should print out Jill and Mary. But now what about, you can use an array list as a property in a class is a property of yet another class. How does that work? Well, you can declare a thing called friend. That's a class. And a friend has a first name and a last name. And so here's your constructor. And here's your two string. You just put a space in between the first name and last name. Your friend's class is an array list of type friends. So now friends is another object. Okay, but this time it's an array list. And here friends is simply an array list and you've got multiple friends. And again, here's a way to test it. Array list versus array. Some important things. Do not confuse array lists with arrays. On the AP exam, you typically will be expected to use an array list to store objects. You will be expected to use an array to store numerical values such as ints or doubles, even though it is possible to store objects in an array. Okay, but typically on the AP exam, objects will be in array lists, primitives, ints and doubles will be in arrays. So array list, you can only store objects. Okay, but remember that with an array list, the Java virtual machine, the JVM, will auto box and unbox to integer and double. Arrays, you can store primitive types or objects in arrays. 
in an array list, the size is dynamic. Okay, remember it's an object, so the, the way that the size becomes dynamic is hidden from you. It's a level of abstraction. For an array, the length is fixed, it's static. An array list, many interesting methods that you need to know for the AP exam, like the remove, the get, the set. For an array, there are a few methods that you need to know for the AP exam. Very basic, kind of like that length. Here, my list dot set three hello. Over here, my array sub three is set to hello. These two accomplish this, these two commands accomplish the same thing, array list and an array. With an array list, okay, three, new integer 12, three, 12. Okay, you could also just put 312 and you would have auto boxing. If you wanted to output something, my list.get3. Here you just my array sub 3. The size method. Here's something that you want to be really careful of. Okay. The size method can be used to obtain the size of array lists. The length, the length can be used, and the length, by the way, is a field, not a method, can be used to obtain the size of an array. Big difference here. The size, you need the open paren, close paren, because you're calling a method. The length, there is no open paren, close paren. It's not a method, it's a field. Now, you can easily insert an element into the middle of an array list just by using add. You cannot easily insert an element into the middle of an array though you can overwrite an existing element. But if you wanted to insert, you're going to have to do all of that background work that happens in an array list over here, okay? This simply inserts it. If you wanna, or overwrites it, if you actually wanna insert it, you're going to have to actually write the code to move all the elements to the right of that location down one. And you'll have to figure out what you want to do with that last element. Do you want to create a new array that's one bigger, or do you just want to lose the last element? Enhanced, enhanced loops, for loops with array list. A special kind of for loop exists, which can be used to efficiently iterate through all the elements of an array list. This kind of for loop is some kind sometimes called an enhanced for loop or a for each loop. A for each loop can be used to traverse an array. So here, an array list. We have an array list of type integers as a score. We add a bunch of scores. Here it's for int x in score list, system.printlinex. In this loop, each element in score list is placed into the variable x which could be any variable name of your choice, which is being declared as an integer. Code inside the loop can use the variable element, but on each successive loop iteration, the value in that element changes to the next element found in the scores list. Okay, so only inside of here does this guy exist, and each time it just pops right on through score list. The following code segment would display the name of each student object in an array list of students named computer science. For student X in computer science, system.out.println x.getName. It's going to go through each one, so location 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., get the name and print it out. Assuming, of course, that the student class has a get name method and computer science contains a bunch of students. If either one of those is false, then this code wouldn't work. But again, it's type, a variable name, any variable name will do, and the name of the array list that you want to iterate through. Linear and binary search. A linear search. It's kind of slow, but very effective. No prerequisites. Okay, you start at the beginning, you go until the end of the list. If you find the item, you return it. Otherwise, you return that index. Otherwise, you return a negative one because a list can't have, neither a list array nor a list can have a negative one. So this is the general code. 
If I wanted to find 9 in this list, I would start with 10, not it. I would go to 20, not it. I would go to 17, not it. I would go to 9, that's it. I would return 3 because it's location 0, 1, 2, 3. Remember, you're returning location. So your index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When you get here, you're going to return. If I look for, if I wanted to search and I wanted to find, oh, say, 40, it would go all the way through and then it would return a negative 1. What about the binary search? Much more efficient. However, needs to be ordered. Okay, if the list is not ordered, then you cannot use the binary search. So, how does this work? Well, once your list is ordered, if I want to find 15, I'm going to start in the middle. So, we take the low is always starts at zero, the high is the array length minus one, while low is less than or equal to high. We have to find the middle. So, that's just low plus high divided by two. It's going to do integer division. Now, if num, okay, is greater than array middle, and remember num is whatever you're looking for, then we're going to move to the upper half of the list. So the low becomes the middle plus one. Otherwise, if the value that we're looking for is less than the current value that's at the middle, we're going to move to the left-hand side of the list. Otherwise, we actually found it, and so we're going to return that value. If we go through the entire thing and we don't find it, we're going to return a negative one. So here we're looking for 15. We start out here. 15 is less than 20, so that means I want to look at the bottom half of the list. So now the low stays zero, but the high becomes, this was at location four, uh, zero, one, two, three, so it becomes two. So now, remember, I don't need to check this one. I already know this one doesn't work. So now I'm looking at this part of the list. The middle is 10, but 15 is more than 10. So now my low becomes here. Low equals high equals middle. I'm going to check 15 equals 15. It took three iterations. And it was going to take three iterations no matter what, because it was either going to return middle or it was going to return negative one. Either this was true or it dumped out, in which case then low and high would switch. Selection and insertion sort. Selection sort, okay? Here, you're going to take each one of your elements. So I'm going to start at the beginning. And the way this code works is it's going to go through and it's going to find the smallest value, which turns out to be 3. Then it's going to store it into a temp location. And essentially, it's going to swap whatever's in the first location with the lowest one. So now I have three here and 20 here. Now, this location is done. So I'm going to search for the next smallest. Well, it turns out that five is good, so I don't make in, I don't have to change it around or I change it with itself. So these two are good. Now I'm going to start here and I'm going to look for the next smallest. That happens to be seven. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to swap 7 and 13. So 7 comes here, 13 goes there. These two swap places, and then I look again. What am I going to find? 11. So 11 and 20 are going to swap, and then 19 and 13 are going to swap, and then we're good. Okay? Again, it's not, you should know what this is doing. You should recognize what's happening with the selection sort. Insertion sort, okay? Insertion sort. How is it different? Ah, let's take a look. 